Hi everyone, I'm Daniel Ord, and let me first wish you a very happy Customer Experience Day. Today I'd like to talk to you a bit about customer perception. Now I live in a small village in a wine growing region here in Germany, and because it's relevant to my story, let me show it to you. Let me share that with you. Give me one second. There we are. This is a very typical view of where I live. And for those of you who are wine drinkers, this region, which is called the Rheingau, produces mostly Riesling. And also in this area, most restaurants are attached to or they're part of wineries. And you'll see why that's important to my story here in just a second. Now, my mother-in-law, she's a local to this region, and she lives just down the hill from us. So I get to see her quite often, which is really nice. And a couple of weeks ago, she and I were out running errands. And we went by a really lovely wine restaurant with a rose garden. And I said, Mama, you know, we've never tried this one. Why don't we have a meal here sometime? By the way, let me show it to you. Here's an example of a, of a wine tavern in the region that I am. So I said, Mama, let's try this one. And then she said, nine, nine, no, no. Um, last time we came here, the washrooms weren't clean. Now, by the way, that was in 1986. Okay, fine. So as we continued on our errands, we came across another wine tavern. Let me show it to you. And I said, Mama, why don't we try this one then? And she said, nine, nine, only the tourists from Frankfurt go here. Now, what's funny is to her, that's a bad thing, I guess, being a local. Uh, whereas I obviously think that the owner is going to find that to be a good thing. So we continued on our journey. And as we turned onto the main highway, I saw a rather grand farmhouse across the vineyards and I pointed at it. And in German, I said, okay, Mama, um, wir haben dieses Restaurant noch nie probiert. Uh, why don't we try this one? We've never been here before. And I bet you can predict what she said. She said, nein, nein. Um, last time we came here, they were quite rude to Hans. Now, Hans was her husband who passed away in 2007. So here's the interesting part for me. You can see that my mother-in-law had a perception of each and every place that I pointed to. And the term perception is very important here because whether it was positive or negative or just blah, her perception was her reality and it impacted her future behavior. She would or wouldn't go back to that place. She would or wouldn't say good things about that particular place. And that's something that customer experience professionals work on every day. They're working to improve the perceptions of people like you who are interacting with their organization. Whether that organization happens to be a grocery store, a concert hall, or a hospital, for example, because they know that your perception is your reality and that it's going to impact your future behavior. Behavior that includes things like recommending you or not. Behavior that includes things like saying good things about you. And perhaps most importantly, honoring you with their trust, which is something that you need to build over time. Now, there's a very interesting model that really looks at how customers perceive their experience. Let me show you that model now. And what I'll do is I'll walk you through these three levels one by one and explain what they mean. So let's, let me use a story again from my mother-in-law. She needed a new mobile phone plan. She's not very tech savvy. She doesn't like calling call centers. So she actually came and asked us to take care of it for her. So I set aside an afternoon and called the mobile phone company's call center. And I'm at level one because I have a goal to accomplish. I need to get my mother a mobile phone plan. Now you could have goals to be accomplished too. You could need to ship a package. You could need to have your teeth cleaned. You could need to choose a wedding planner. And we all are out there looking for providers that are gonna help us get our goals accomplished. That's really important. So in my story, I reached out to the call center agent. We had the dialogue back and forth. He actually said, sir, we've got exactly the right plan for you. It suits your mother perfectly. She doesn't use a smartphone. She's not very tech savvy. It's not very expensive. So he helped me accomplish my goal. That's fantastic. And every organization needs to get this level one right. It's fundamental, it's foundational. And one example I use is, if you go to a restaurant that serves bad food, it really frankly doesn't matter how beautiful the decor or the location is. Now, let's go to the second level. In this level, we ask ourselves how easy or not easy was it 
to get my goal accomplished, to do what I need to do. So in my example, I called a call center. Now, many times calling a call center can be an absolutely miserable experience. I think you've been through it too. You wait and wait and wait, you finally reach someone and then they tell you you've reached the wrong place and they redirect you somewhere else. You end up pressing one and two and 99. You repeat yourself over and over. It feels like nobody can understand you. You would say that you put a lot of effort into that and that's not a good thing. It's supposed to be easy, but for you, it wasn't easy. Now, in my story of the call center agent, actually, it was surprisingly quite easy. I reached the person. I didn't wait too long. He knew what I wanted. He listened carefully, and he was able to help me accomplish my goal pretty quickly, which made me actually feel really good. And today, the second level is becoming increasingly important, especially when you look at all the digital solutions out there. Customers are expecting things to be easier, not harder. Let's go to the top. We're now at the top level, and this is probably the most important level. And this is the level where we ask, how did I feel about that experience that I just went through? Now here you see the word enjoyable. Just look at enjoyable as a shorthand for emotion, because emotion comes in many flavors. You can have joy, you can have frustration, you can have sadness, you can have irritation. There's an infinite number of emotions that can go here. We just use enjoyable simply because it's shorthand and easier to remember. Now for the call I made to the mobile phone company, I felt really reassured. That's the emotion that stands out for me most when I think back. And I think I felt reassured because I got the plan that I needed. I know that I feel good about the decision that I made. And frankly, I also felt a bit of relief because calling a call center can be a miserable experience, as we mentioned. So the fact that it was so easy, you can see the impact of ease in my experience here. The fact that it was so easy gave me a sense of relief. And I think that's really important. So as a CX professional, what they'll do is they will look at a pyramid like this and they'll look at level one and say, level one is foundational. Our shampoo has to clean your hair. Our website has to answer your question. Um, level two, we look at how easy or hard something is. We want to make things easier in many cases for customers so that they have a better perception overall. And at the top of the pyramid, level three, we have the emotion part. And CX research, research shows that 50% or more of how a customer is going to experience and remember this experience is driven by the emotion that they feel, especially at the end of the experience. So it's an important question for us to ask is, are we delivering the right emotion? And think about it this way. If you have a fear of the dentist, going to the dentist gives you angst. Then it's great if the dentist has the competency to conduct the procedure that you're going for, but you'd also be looking for emotional cues or emotional sense that the dentist cares about you, that they're addressing your fear, that they're calming you down, that they're being, making sure that they're recognizing that in the way that they're treating you. Not that they just grab out their clean drills and get to work and you know, doing your teeth and so forth. So. so let me stop the screen here as we come to the end of my short talk here. There we go, I'm back. Now, in closing, last year my mother-in-law um, was diagnosed with breast cancer. So after, uh, over the past few months, We've been on really numerous hospital visits and clinic visits, apotekin, pharmacies, and so forth. And believe me, she feels that CX pyramid each and every time. I can see it right in front of me. In fact, I've used some of her visits to these hospitals and clinics as a basis for some of the experience design work I'm currently doing in the healthcare sector. And we also use the CX pyramid when we're designing mystery shopper for various clients. So it's a really valuable and useful tool in part because it's simple, but it also opens a whole new range of thinking. So let me close by saying this, it makes intuitive sense that doing more of the things customers like and less of the things they don't is good for your business. That makes perfect sense. And being good for your business really matters. But for me, one of the coolest things about designing and creating these great customer experiences is it's not just good for business, it's often exactly the right thing to do for another human being. So thank you again for letting me share my story. And I'd also like to say if you ever find yourself in Germany or near the Rheingau, I hope you'll contact me and I will take you to one of these wine taverns.
Thank you very much again. Happy CX Day.